Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Conversations in Pop Culture. I have with me two people from Anime Next, the con chair, and I believe a manager from Anime Next, Brian and George. So thank you for being on. No problem. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, thanks for having us. Now, I am super excited because I loved Anime Next, and my story with Anime Next is... I had my first big panel there where I had 250 people in a room, did not expect that it. it was my fourth panel, and so Anime Next has a very soft spot for me, and this was in Somerset, New Jersey, before you guys moved to Atlantic City. So for those who don't know Anime Next, what is Anime Next, and how did it form, and where are you guys located now, so that everybody knows what Anime Next exactly is? So the first Anime Next was held in 2002, and we've been around this upcoming year for 2021 is going to be what would be our 20th show. And we were started by a group of individuals who were friends from college. They all went to college in Long Island and met a couple of older individuals who were involved in the scene. Uh, the older individuals put together some money to put on the first Anime Next, and it's been volunteer run from the beginning. And we're still currently located in Atlantic City, New Jersey. They've been a great host for us, and we look forward to having our show there again in 2021. And so to talk a little bit even more about Anime Next and talk about what you guys offer. So obviously there's panels, voice actor guests come in, other guests relating to the anime group, as well as there's a dealer's room. So walk me through a little bit about the entire intricacies of planning a con and how that has evolved from the very first one all the way to now because you guys attract a lot of talented voice actors and actresses. So I'll answer your question in a couple of parts. The first part, uh, we do have a lot of content. Uh, in the past few years, we've seen a spike in new content. We have our Atasha car show, which is grown by leaps and bounds, and they have some amazing content in store for people for 2021. We have panels, we have masquerade, we have several dance opportunities, including your traditional, more EDM kind of dance. We have a cosplay formal, we have A&B content, LARP. We're expanding on our board game content and tabletop gaming as a whole. And just a whole bunch of things in those avenues, in addition to your traditional panels. We've been adding more workshops. And, yeah, we always pride ourselves on being receptive to and trying to integrate and find better and new content every year. Uh, as for voice actors, we've definitely had a pretty good track record of getting awesome voice actors in the earlier years of the show, it was easier to get voice actors because New York had a big scene for anime voice acting. You had places like Central Park Media and Media Blasters, for those of you who remember your classic Slayers or Rurouni Kenshin, things like that, that were all recorded in New York. Now you really only have Duart and they do limited stuff for Pokemon, which might be migrating back to the West Coast. Or you have Funimation in Texas, and now that's where... Most of your voice actors are concentrated. So after we lost the big pool of local talent, we shifted to building up our relationships with the people in Texas and on the West Coast. And our guests have great things to say every year. And before I was chairman, I was in charge of the guest department for a while and staffed on it for even longer. So we always try to keep our eyes open and our ears listening for who attendees would like to see and also who's relevant based on what new shows are coming out. And we've been very fortunate that whether it's Japanese animation studios or American voice actors or even musical acts, we usually have our finger pretty close to the pulse. So that's largely in part due to an awesome team. And yeah, I mean, it's been a great time working with people like George and others to uh, keep on coming up with new ideas every year. It's definitely never been a super sale and repetitive process. And to even speak about that, one of the things, and I don't know if this has changed, but one of the things that I liked about Anime Next is that a lot of the voice actors do sign for free. And that's something that was really, really cool when I was back there 
very early on is that a lot of them sign at least one or two things for free and at other conventions that's not the case and so that's something that was really impressive for me as a fan is that you get to speak to them and you get to talk for 45 seconds or even sometimes a minute to them and so that's what I loved back in the day when I was at Anime Next so that's something that I thought was really well done with your comment. Well, thank you. Uh, that's, that's actually, actually still our policy, is any guests that we book, we try to keep with popular trends, but at the same time, that's something we've always prided ourselves on, is there are opportunities for everyone in every socioeconomic bracket, because a lot of times for people, even getting the money to go to con and pitch in for your part of a room is already quite the task, so we don't want to prevent people from having an opportunity to meet with voice actors or get something signed. And our voice actors have all been very great about hybrid policies and things like that. Like what you're describing with the pay across the board model is something that I, as a longtime convention attendee and staffer, see more often in the comic book industry. And that's more the standard there. It's very but much in the comic you, industry where... I'm in D.C., and not to throw a convention under the bus, but at Awesome Con, it is very much pay to play. And at the anime cons, what I find is that it's very much that guests will sign one or two things for free, or they'll sign three things for free, and then they charge. But there is this idea that they will sign something for free, and obviously not bootlegged or anything like that. And that's something that I think anime cons have gotten right. Yeah, it depends on the location. Like, if they're in a dealer's room, then of course they're charging for what they're signing. But I think the big thing is for a lot of anime conventions, not just ours, since they are volunteer run, and since they are usually started by people who are fans of anime and have gone to conventions, it's something that they try to pay it forward in a kind of way. So we all pride ourselves on, again, distinguishing ourselves from the pay-to-play conventions or things of that nature by giving everyone an equal opportunity at getting something memorable for free. And then if you so happen to be in a position where you want something targeted, sign because you need every voice actor on this poster and you have the means, and you can also save yourself a wait in the line and you can go pay for it directly too. But it's one of those things that I hope that other shows continue to maintain the system because it's something that honestly makes us as a fandom and us as a member of like the convention bracket very cool and awesome like it adds a little bit more of a family feel to it because people are always looking out for you guys as attendees even when they become staff so that kind of everyone looking out for one another's best interest is something that keeps me motivated to keep working for it every year and now, obviously, this year is a tough year. We are in the middle of COVID-19. It's not pleasant for anybody. A lot of cons have postponed, and I think those cons are going to be canceled, and that's my opinion. And I think you guys made the right call by canceling your con. And the way things are going, it's looking like this is going to be for the long haul. And so I'm very curious on how that decision was made and what the discussion was like, because I do think that was the right call in many ways. All right, so we'll give you two different perspectives on this. I'll start off, and then George can chime in because he has a very pertinent and different perspective than I do. But for me, I work in IT. I work at Rockstar Games. And when you work in IT as a system, and one of the most important things you have to be able to do is disaster plan or to take every possible contingency into account and looking at how things were spreading i looked at metrics i tracked how much it was spreading what areas it was spreading to but there are other things that go into the decisions like that such as if we have a ban on non-essential business the people who make your program guys those are non-essential businesses the people who make the t-shirts those are non-essential businesses when the hotels close you can't really have people making reservations to come to your show. When the food venues that are going to be used to feed your staff have had to close their doors or lay off people or things like that, 
now you have a concern about feeding your staff when schools are canceled till the end of May. Depending on people's home situations, some of your staffers might be burning PTO to watch their kids because daycares are also closed. And then you also have to take into consideration the rate at which it's spreading, and also you want to make sure that you do something or make a decision that's prudent for attendees because you don't want to invite people into an environment where a lot of them are at risk, and a lot of the considerations you take into account for your staff also apply to attendees. Like If you get laid off, by all means, your first focus would not be, oh, man, I got to go to this anime con. It's like, oh, God, I need to get a job. I need to get money. How am I going to get from day to day? Or for any of those individuals who are unfortunate enough to have family members affected, your time shifts there. Your focus shifts there. And that's where it should be, is staying safe. Or if you have anyone who's dealing with it, making sure that they're staying safe. And to detract from people's time, and to put staff in a weird spot where they might have to be like, hey, I don't have the PTO. And just with all the vendors having issues because of the things issued by the states and even finding out that the convention center, actually three of the four convention centers in New Jersey are potentially going to be tapped to be field hospitals and details on that are still up in the air. And the Javits Center, for example, has been converted into a field hospital. I think Los Angeles Convention Center has been tapped for it too. There are a lot of small things that create ripples that eventually you just kind of have to reach a conclusion that it's better to be safe and make sure you make the decision that is safer in the long term because no one knows when gathering restrictions will be lifted. No one knows when these places are going to be opened up again. No one knows how many delays we're going to have. So while it does suck that we won't get to see all of our attendees this year, but the way we look at it is now we have more time to make sure 2021 is astronomically amazing and our guests have been very good about rolling over their attendance and yeah i mean it's regrettable but i think it's the most prudent decision that anyone can make with so much uncertainty in the air and george if you want to provide a perspective since you have a different viewpoint than i do sure so um uh I work as a uh, full-time in the events and conference industry, actually. So uh, I bo- uh, volunteer work at Anime Next at night, and during the daytime, I do it the same thing pretty much for a living. So I'm kind of in the industry 24-7. And um, what we started noticing, at least in my um, professional stand, is that a lot of medical conferences, which is a big target client of um, my organization, and we work with a lot of them, um, they had to start canceling as well because not even just the rebounding effects of, Oh, I don't want to come in contact with other people. It's also the thing where people are needed as Brian said, you know, so you got to think about it. If we're canceling all these non-essential businesses and we have only essential workers. Now let's say anime X continues and we're still in some weird standpoint of a hybrid where some people are staying at home. Some people are still working. You have to think about it. Only, essential workers would be able to leave you know what i'm saying they would be in contact with other people and when you're you know working in a environment such as a doctor or a nurse or whatever it's not even so much just not being able to go to a conference you're not being able to go to conferences because you're going back to your lab going back to whatever you know doctors do unfortunately i'm not qualified to speak to that i'm I'm kind of just manage the software side of stuff but um a lot of people are being called to their essential jobs to, you know, assist with the crisis. And that being said, you know, a lot of our staff have those positions and they're still working. Or, as Ryan said, you know, they're not working. Now, looking at it as an attendee's perspective, if I were to be an attendee of the convention and not actually be a staff member, um, I might not be able to afford to come because, you know, I'm either burning through PTOs to watch my child I'm burning through PTOs because I might have a compromised immune system. And even though my job is open, such as a restaurant, I'm scared to go in because I don't want to get sick. You know, um, I have respiratory issues myself, so I'm very thankful that my job is allowing me to work from home in the meantime because I would be an at-risk person, you know, in modern-day society. So it's a really scary thing to think about. And if you're, you know, not having income because your job is not operational or if you do have a job that's operational and you're not able to commit full-time hours. You know, I'm, I'm personally having a, a 
struggle everyone is, you know, if you have children who are usually at school all day and, you know, now they're home with you and you're trying to give a work-life balance to everything. So we don't want to put our attendees in a weird spot either because they're like, oh, well, I bought, you know, a membership for the year, a three-day weekend pass, and now I can't go because, you know, it's either do I feed myself well and clothe myself well or do I attend this con that I'm going to for so long? And I don't ever want to put someone in that kind of position where it might be a financial hardship decision or anything like that because there are a lot of bounding effects on the economy. I mean, we can look at the stock market for a moment. There was a huge drop. Granted, everything has started to return, but at the same token, the events industry as a whole is essentially decimated right now because there's billions and billions of dollars that go into these conferences every year with convention centers and decorators and such. And, you know, most decorators aren't working because there's no conferences being held. So those people aren't getting paid, right? Or they're furloughed or whatever their financial status is. It's awkward. And you don't ever want to separate your attendance because they had some type of hardship that no one expected because no one could have predicted this. And it's just very unfortunate. So it was a really big, tough call to make that decision. But we wanted to make sure when we deferred to the following year that we were able to keep our, <coughs> excuse me, our audience completely inclusive and not exclude anyone because of something that was completely out of their hands and something that no one could have expected. So that was, that was a big part of why I came to that decision as well, because there's, you know, people such as myself, you know, like I said, work life balance. It's, it's completely struggle. And so, I mean, I do a lot of panels and my viewpoint and why I thought this was the right call is I've been interviewing a lot of people who go to cons as of lately, and I go to a lot myself, and I've been lucky that I've never caught what is called the con crutch, where somebody is sick at a convention and then it spreads through, and I've been lucky in that realm. And I have a physical disability, and also my immune system is a little bit weaker than others, so I did not feel comfortable when I had a panel at Awesome Con that was supposed to take place on May 1st. And they postponed, and I was actually going to pull out. And one of the concerns for me as a panelist is that I pride myself on being a professional. And so because they postponed, it actually made me feel a lot better. Because things do spread through cons, and it's just natural for humans, and this is extremely infectious. And so as an attendee, you know, and, and on that side, and as a panelist... And especially somebody who's also volunteering their time, I don't want to be put at risk. And I think that that's a, one of the biggest concerns because I don't know the full attendance of anime next, but you guys attract a lot of people. And so that's something that I wasn't even thinking about paid time off or anything like that. I was thinking about more just the health safety issue. Well, that's also a big part of it. I mean, you touched on it when you mentioned con crud or con plague or slow motion, as some of us jokingly refer to it at our show. But um, it's one of those things where you don't want to take what is already a delicate situation and then exacerbate it further. Because, again, like you mentioned, when you have thousands and tens of thousands of people in close proximity over the course of a three-day weekend, everyone is already being introduced to a cocktail of germs that other people have. Like, I just got over or cold. <laughs> or someone else might have had this. And you don't want to, like, exacerbate things. But it also makes the value for attending a show diminish if, at least in my opinion, when I was an attendee, if I went to a show and I didn't get con play and I had a great time, it was a highlight of, like, that particular weekend or month. If you went to a show and you got con play and then you're out of comm commission for, like, another two weeks, that kind of detracts from the overall opinion of the show. So, yeah, you definitely touched on something very good there, but I will say the one thing I have been very impressed about is the overwhelmingly positive support and feedback we've had from our attendees. Like, a lot of people were disappointed that they had cosplay or they had panels or ideas that they wanted to show at our convention, but everyone, given the situation going on, has been very logical and looking 
at the big picture with their thought process. And that's something that I take great pride in for our fandom is while a lot of other groups around the U.S. even aren't adhering to the rules or don't understand why X, Y, and Z are happening, the attendee base that we've cultivated over our almost 20 years of existence, they were extremely supportive and lots of people hit me up on Facebook directly and it's just fantastic that people were being that forward-minded with their thought process during, like George mentioned, these very, very difficult times. Like, if you go look on AnimeCons.com, it looks like a hit list because you just see so many things getting postponed or canceled, not only in the U.S., but just internationally. But it's one of those times where for the greater public safety and the greater good of just these events not taking a big risk or losses for forcing a show through, it's a good time for people to be positive in their feedback and support their local shows that have had to make this difficult choice. So I definitely encourage anyone who listens to the podcast, if you know shows that had to cancel, reach out to somebody if you know they're on staff and just say like, hey, thanks for your hard work. We look forward to next year because it really sucks for the staffers that have put in nine months of work to get to this point for something no one ever predicted. And then you have to pull the plug. But again, the community has been very great about it. Even voice actors, industry people, Atlantic City was great with us when we gave them the news and they helped us along the way. So definitely everyone in the fandom, keep up the good work. And I think Brian touched on some really good points there. And as far as like the, the safety concern that you had mentioned, um, so obviously with the certain restrictions in play, what good would it be to have a panel that can hold, you know, your panel, you had what, 250 people and you said that was a highlight, right? I was amazing and was not expecting, I was expecting 20. So how would you feel if you could only have 20? And I told you that because that's the health restrictions. You know, you wouldn't feel very good, nor would you be, you know, um, inclined to to participate, right? Enthusiastic. I would be upset, to be honest. I would be upset and I would be upset with the con staff. And and that's just me. And I think other people would be too. And I don't think it would be personal. It's just the idea that I put in a lot of work and a lot of people put in a lot of work in their panels and people want a hundred people in there. And so I think that if you were to limit that, it would be a great demoralizer for a exactly. lot of people. And, and not even just that. Now you have even more of, you know, kind of touching on, I don't, I don't want to call it inhumane, but I want to call it, you know, you, you become like almost serialized numbers. If you've ever seen the music video for Pink Floyd's, you know, the wall, like, the big scene where they're walking along the conveyor belt, you know, that's kind of how I would imagine everyone's walking through hallways because everyone's six feet apart. The line is on one side of the hallway and then everyone's six feet on the other side of the hallway. And it would just look awful. It wouldn't be fun for anyone. You know, that doesn't sound like a good environment. And it's really important to me to always make sure that our environment is the most supportive for our attendance in whatever their dreams are for the weekend you know what i'm saying and their safety is always in mind because your dreams of whatever you know you want to achieve during the convention weekend you know some people want to go to the dealer's room they want to go blow 800 bucks on some super rare figuring go for it i love it you know some people want to go play the play the tournaments in the video games room absolutely you want to go see some cool panels content you know that you you never heard of before you want to go work at a workshop or whatever your dreams may be it's important that we create a safe environment and not only safe in health wise (laughs) health wise but as in like safe as in emotionally mentally you know in all the aspects and it wouldn't be good for anyone's mental health as well to really limit everything going on you know force everyone to wear masks and all these things and i don't think that's a really pretty picture and not saying that reality isn't pretty that's not at all i'm not trying to detract from the reality of the situation but i wouldn't want to label myself or put my attendees at risk in any way shape or form or any of safety any form of their safety at risk because of a crisis that no one expected you know and to further the point of the whole thing with the 20 people in the room you know 
it's really important that all of our creators get to see their work really fleshed out and live to be its full potential. Because, you know, whatever creation you may do, if it's on staff as a staff member and you're creating, you know, systems for people to work with or you're working on, you know, background email stuff, whatever it may be, or you as a creator, you know, with the panels or any type of guest, it's important that we also enable an environment for them to really let their let their dreams for the convention weekend live to their full potential. So it kind of comes from all sides where there's a lot of safety concerns. And like I said, it's not just the physical aspect that we took into consideration as well. And it, it was really tough to come with that. But as Ryan said, everyone's been nothing but absolutely supportive of us. And it's been fantastic that, you know, to have a fandom that really understands the bigger vision here because a convention or any type of gathering is a place where fans, just like you and me, regardless that I'm staff or you're not or you're a panelist or you're a guest, we can be like, oh yeah, that one thing that we both really love, no way! That's really important. And if we miss that target, what's the point of having a convention? You know, so we wanted to make sure that that is the utmost forefront part of our vision, and that's always enabled. And we felt that we couldn't really enable that environment this year, so that was a big part of it. And now you touched upon environment, and I am curious towards the future. And nobody's gonna hold anybody to anything, but I'm just very curious as to what steps Anime Next is taking for 2021, as well as what you think other cons are going to take to deal with this and having a more sanitary environment. Because I do think that things need to change in all events, whether it's a baseball game or an anime or a Comic-Con. And so I'm very curious as to what has been thrown out there and what has been discussed in that realm. Because, and not just for Anime Next, but for a con like Awesome Con as well, and even an anime Boston that just canceled. Because that, that's what I think a lot of fans are wondering about right now is how do we create safe environments so we don't have or we minimize this at the next con, wherever that may be. Um, I think that's really important. Um, so it, it's there's a lot of things that you can hypothetically look at or try to do um one of the things we're looking at is more like hand sanitizing stations and that types of things but obviously those all come with costs but at the same time we would never want to um put our attendees at risk and we'd always want to make sure that we have their safety in mind so we've talked about you know some type of sanitizing stations or more procedures like that but unfortunately we don't really know yet because this is something that being very honest, I'm not equipped to handle or equipped to speak on. I don't know the rebounding medical effects. I'm far from a doctor. You know, I have zero medical experience in my life. So, unfortunately, because I don't know enough about how these things spread, and I would have to wait until, you know, there's more news or more information on it, because right now, everyone is telling you, it spreads this way, wipe this down, wipe that down, do this, don't cough on that, do this. Who do you listen to? You know, when you have 700 people shouting at you all different information, that's, that's something that you really can't account for. So it was important when we started making the next steps plan that we kind of have all of our ideas on a bulletin board, but we don't dedicate to one idea right now because we don't know what the next best steps that, you know, the health advisories are going to tell us to do. So we really want to take that into consideration, but we have, you know, put some effort forth into like, like I said, like some type of sanitizing station, whatever that may be, where they would be located throughout the vicinity of the convention is really what more we're looking at right now. Since we don't know what the station is, it's more location. And then the final question I want to ask is obviously anime next for 2020 is canceled but how can fans still stay in contact with Anime Next to find updates as well as continue to support and find out what is going on for 2021 and how that show is going to be amazing and continuously just support? Well, we plan on taking a new approach to some of our outreach events and how we get involved in the community over the course of the next 14 months. 
So there will definitely be a lot of cool pop-up events and things of that nature that we're going to look into pursuing. And we have some cool partnerships. Uh, we did a press release for one of them with Atlantis Comics and Games, which is a Virginia-based reseller of comic books and board games and collectible card games and things of the sort to build out a massive board game library. And there will be opportunities for people to interact with us, depending on how we utilize that. We have our traveling manga library. We're going to look into working with other events on some cool new initiatives that George has been working on. And we understand that in terms of just socialization, it's a big loss for a lot of people to lose conventions because a lot of the best friends that I have were either from my college fraternity or from the convention scene. And during this time where you're pretty much socially isolated in terms of the physicality of being out and hanging around with other people, we definitely are keeping that in mind and plan to try to come up with a couple of really cool ideas for our attendees once everything clears up. And that's one of the things I definitely love about the team is they're always looking for new things. Uh, last year we volunteered at the Obon Festival with the Philly Japan Society and we had a show in there. And there are just a whole bunch of opportunities that we're going to try to take advantage of to feed the need for people in more than just a one weekend capacity and kind of stay more in touch with our attendee base and expand that as well as just reach out with our fans. Um, our Discord channel, they do different initiatives on this like public Discord and yeah, just all kinds of cool things like that. And then where can Anime Next be found on social media? Because that's a big communication tool. Facebook is big. Instagram is big. Twitter is always big. So what are those at symbols? And lock so you can find us on Facebook as forward slash Anime Next. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Anime Next. You can find us on Instagram as at Anime Next Con, C-O-N. Because somebody stole it before we could get to it. If you got it, call me, though. And I think we're going to leave it at that because we covered a lot of stuff. Everybody go follow Anime Next on whatever preferred social media. You know, support your cons. I've been saying it to everybody that I've been speaking to in the last three weeks. Is Whether it's a wrestler, support your indie wrestler, support your local businesses, support your favorite comic book artists, support your anime cons. Because we as fans, if we don't support them, they don't exist. And during these trying times, giving somebody a like on Facebook or a follow on Twitter goes a long way. And you will stay in the loop with any updates that they have.